And he also became a professor there, but not in chemistry, uh, but in applied math. I don't know how you managed to take that step. So that was in 82, and he stayed uh, as a, a professor for applied math until 93, mm -hmm. right, at Northwestern, before he returned back to Brussels, to the University of Libre, now in the Department of Physics. Um, so that's where he is uh, until the current day as a professor of physics, and uh, he's one of the experts on the mathematical treatment, uh, a lot on the analytic treatment of uh, delay systems, of uh, fast slow systems, so multiple time scale analysis, and a lot more. And we're happy to have you here and hear today something about uh, delay systems. Thank you, Ingo. Uh, I'm interested. I think it's a nice word to say. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's the uh, first time for me, finally. <laughs> I can see all of the friends here, so I'm quite happy to uh, visit you. This is a fantastic island. I enjoy it. Um, I remember that uh, Claudio always in stock presents a picture of his island. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why put the picture of Brussels in front. <laughs> so, <laughs> as you can see, it's raining, but uh, <laughs> it's not too bad as an environment. Either, so. Okay, so Ingo asked me to give you more uh, review of uh, where the linear equation appears. So I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to assume that we're not expert in the field and introduce you a little bit about um, how the differential equation appears and uh, how different people with different expertise and experience are handling that. And you will see this quite surprising depending on the fact that you are engineers or physicists or mathematicians. So I will start with some familiar examples exam that everybody can understand, like the shower problem. Then I will be more serious and talk about uh, how the equations appear in biology, physiology, engineering, and even optics, obviously. An important part of today's research using delay differential equations is to actually use delay to stabilize systems that are otherwise unstable. Uh, half of the literature right now is on control theory, using delay. And then I'm going to be a little bit more specific about some very recent recent research <coughs> results, and I will tell a story or saga of the square waves in delay equations. Okay. So first, a little bit about uh, the common example. This is an example that everybody can understand. You want to control the vehicle, you know, on the moon or March. And you are facing the problem that uh, every signal takes some time to go back and forth uh, from between Earth and the Moon. It takes two, 10 seconds for the Moon, but for Mars, it takes 40 minutes. Okay? In 40 minutes, the vehicle has a chance to fall into the ground. So it is a problem. Here, it is an example I took from uh, last year. So it is a European space probe that made a very long trip and went close to an asteroid, which are about 450 million of kilometers away from the Earth. That probe is, has a velocity <coughs> of 15 kilometers by second. <coughs> It doesn't have a lot of time to take pictures. Okay. Now, if it takes 25 minutes to go and communicate with Hertz, sure, you will not make the rendezvous. Okay. So actually, what happened in that particular case, advanced programming was necessary. So people, before they launch the probe, actually compute every minute of its trajectory and then he was able to do this thing. Okay. So this is a problem uh, that we are facing. This is the shower problem. It's a very serious problem that everybody actually experienced one in his lifetime. Uh, and even today, if you were from, uh, if 
somebody is flushing the toilet, so they get some hot water coming in <laughs> in your shower. So it is a problem of delay because it takes time for water, the hot water, you have a thermostat, you put a thermostat on the right temperature, the exact temperature, but it takes time for the hot water to come into the pipe and finally into the shower. Okay? And this is typically a delay differential equation problem because the growth of temperature, the increase of temperature in the shower will depend on the temperature not at times t at the shower, but at times t minus tau at the time when the hot water came from the, the, the cap. Okay? And this is the actual numerical solution of this equation. Okay? And you can see that you have some typical oscillatory behavior before you come to the desired state. Okay. So it's not cheating, you just take this equation here. The only novelty is the fact that I think to account that uh, hot water takes some time tau to go uh, to uh, the shower. Okay. So oscillations are present. Of course, in practice, when you get burn here, when you turn the thermostat to uh, cold temperature, and then of course the words will appear because if it will be even cooler before <laughs> you go back to the steady state. So even to play you know very drastically with the thermostat before you know you get the steady state. Okay. So the, the message here is that you get some oscillation quite easily. Here another problem that is well documented since the 50s when people were uh, concerned about traffic problem, when they want to make models, well, you have to model the interaction between, uh, say, uh, driver number one and uh, driver number two that follow driver number one. And uh, you can just simply model that by saying that the acceleration of uh, driver number two is a function of difference of speed between the two cars. If they have the same speed, there's no reason to accelerate or to brake. But for example, if uh, V1 just suddenly becomes uh, smaller, because driver 1 starts to brake, then the difference here becomes negative, and obviously you're going to uh, brake. Okay? A2 will be negative. However, this is not good to occur immediately. You have some reaction time. Okay. Before you note that you have indeed a danger in front of you, and you react. Okay. And this reaction time is um, typically of the order of one to two seconds, which is quite a lot. Let's be a little bit more uh, physical. Let's try to uh, um, integrate the equation. This is a linear equation. You integrate numerically, you take into account that you have here a delay tau. Here is an example which I took here. I decided that drive number one decreased its velocity from 80 km an hour to 60 for one second, <coughs> and then come back to uh, restore speed after another second. Okay? So this is a given pass for V1, which is here. And Driver number two is going to respond to this uh, drop of speed, but after reaction time of tau, which is in this case one second. So nothing happened for one second, then suddenly it reacts and you get this oscillation here. Okay? The distance here between uh, the two cars dramatically decreased from 10 to almost 5 meters. Note that you have this decaying oscillation here. Okay? We already know from the shower problem this is a typical feature of the fact that you are having a delay equation here. Okay? Put in other words, the system cannot follow because it is too slow, and therefore it cannot just get back to a steady state uh, exponentially. It has to go. Okay, those are numbers I took uh, from the web. 
Actually, uh, in some documentation is not one fragment. They make it a little bit larger. Okay. 1.5 or 2 seconds. Um, in some official paper, you can even see 2 seconds. Because you want to be on the safe side. Uh, the legal limits in Spain, like this in Belgium, is 0.5 gram per liter in blood. Except if you are a truck driver or a bus driver, or if you have your license for two years, mm -hmm. that's 0.3. Okay. Now I just want to make things clear. You know what 0.5 gram per liter in blood mean? It means one shot, two glass of wine. Kind of I mean, those things I've, you can find easily on the web. Look for blood alcohol <coughs> level control. <laughs> now, with this, you will have a reaction time that increase a little bit. I take here 1.5 seconds, but it can be a little bit larger, depending on the age of the driver and uh, weight and so on. But here is again the numerical simulation of this big equation here. Acceleration of cardinal V2, T plus tau, alpha, V1 minus V2. <coughs> Giving a pattern for V1, I immediately with the equation find the velocity. With the first order differential equation. This is the previous pattern, one second. For one second, and then with 1.5, you can see that the oxidation increases dramatically. Okay. You know, obviously, obviously, the things are not going to be so simple because uh, the psychology of the driver will react differently. You know, if it's the danger and so on. This is a different story. You know, I'm not going to uh, predict the condition on uh, the, the, the reaction time above which you will have a. Car <laughs> but this is an important feature that people know and we need to fit. This is something I like to show um, when I visit the US, UK, because there the legal limit is 0.8 gram per liter, and then the reaction time documented again on the web is 3 seconds. You can imagine what happened to this. Okay. Now, in those countries, you have to be clear, in those countries here, um, they never use this as criteria for uh, finding you. Okay? They use different tests to check you know, if you're able to drive or not. Mm -hmm. For example, you have to walk on the white line. Okay? So usually you are arrested before that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, again, I assume that we don't know anything about the equation problem. They have the reputation to be a mathematically difficult problem, but I will show you that it is not the case. We all know how to solve this equation here. Okay, we learned this in high school. It is an exponential solution, and that is monotone and equal to zero. Okay. We learned that it models different problem. For example, the radioactive decay of carbon-14, and therefore this is a very important function. Uh, this is a single linear delay differential equation here. The difference between the sister is that uh, here, the growth of the variable y, or here more precisely the decay of variable y, is proportional to its present value, present state. Here, the growth or the decay of variable y is not a function of its present state, but at some time in the past. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if you inject that function here, <coughs> inside this equation here, take the derivative of the sine function, just expand this function here using your favorite trick identity, you find some term sine t, some term cosine t, the whole coefficient has to be equal to zero, and you find out that this function here is an exact solution of this equation here if tau equals the power of two. Okay? So you have the sine function. Okay? So 
you can algebraically check, and I used to do this class, you can algebraically check that just plugging in that in that equation here, taking derivatives, take trigger identities, you find that the solution exists for the entire area. You can have more solutions, etc. But this is what contrasts with the sister equation here, where you have here a stupid decay, and here you have some oscillation. Okay? So again, the main message is that with a delay equation, you need to expect some uh, oscillatory behavior, but provide the delay is sufficiently large. Okay. Uh, again, in other words, the system cannot follow because it takes so much time to uh, check that uh, it does something different. And then, of course, you change the, uh, the behavior that in the past, and uh, it takes so much time, and therefore, the mm -hmm. answer here is trying desperately to come back to the steady state in that is the procedure behavior. Now, here is a list of books specially issued that came since 2009. <coughs> we really have an explosion of uh, literature, and I only put the books or, or special issues that uh, I reviewed. I actually found that there are right now 16 books that came out in this period of time, but only those ones I have reviewed. So far. Okay. So you can understand that uh, it's becoming a hot topic. Before it was just uh, the contribution of a very pure mathematician who writes books without any figures, theorems. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks to the power of our computers, since the year 2000, we were able to explore delay differential equations and even revive some old problem and uh, find some new problems. Okay? So numerically, it is no more a problem. The point I wanted to make is that uh, we are still far away from uh, a good collaboration between people with different fields. They are mathematicians, they are engineers, they are uh, physicists. Everybody is working on his favorite problem, but uh, it's only now recently that we have some uh, workshop conferences where, where people with different expertise, different backgrounds are uh, talking about their favorite topic. And then you realize that, uh, oh, this guy is also looking for a periodic solution, okay? Or oh, this guy is also doing the linear experiment, okay? So this is basically uh, coming up, and that's why we have those special issue now that come in. Um, but again, th this is only nine publications, but I found 16 publications, and I didn't check all of them. <coughs> Springer seems to be this, the champion of the machine. <laughs> but uh, there are other uh, editors. So, a time delay is taken into account in the model when the mechanical or physical feedback takes time. Okay? And oscillatory regimes are possible, but later on I will show you that people are using delay to study this. So, don't take uh, the message that uh, with delay everything is bad. Okay. You are. Thomas, one point. When you say that the delay, that feedback takes time, but that's the, the time matters. I mean, yeah. it has to be comparable with the internal time scale yeah. of the yeah. system. It's not, it can take time, but if the system is slower, yeah. then it's yeah. okay. And yeah. as you know, you can have a feedback in analog scale, analog time scale, but uh, the mm -hmm. physical time scale of the near, you know, is so fast that uh, the delay is huge. Yeah. And mm -hmm. is like, Here is a problem that again everybody can understand. This is appearing in population dynamics. Um, the, the example I, take, I took here come from a read book in uh, biophysics. I mean, I, I really look to uh, courses uh, given to uh, students in ecology to see to what level of mathematics they're expecting to understand, okay? 
those students are going to mainly on, on the field. Yeah? They are learning by looking at the field. But in the course, they have something called the delayed logistic equation. Okay? And the delayed logistic equation is this equation here, the logistic equation here, where you have this t minus tau that appears. Now, you may have different explanation or different motivation for what introducing this delay. It could be the gestation time, you know, uh, thick the birth of, the, of a, a newborn, but it can also depend on the state of uh, the food level, for example. And the food level will depend on the parents that only use uh, the, the food before that. Okay? And um, therefore, you have to take into account about uh, a certain delay before the newborn can appear, you know, and grow. Okay. And when the newborn appears and, and grow and become adults, they are using again the food level. So again, there is a problem and so on. And that problem can be roughly measured by this delay tau that will limit the saturation of the population growth. So here is the recording of the lemming, which is living in. Uh, Churchill area, which is one of those islands in Canada, it's quite a remote country. You can see the behavior is almost periodic, and the broken line here is the fitting with the solution of this equation, okay, with those parameters. Okay. And I can give you many other examples where this curve fitting is done. This is coming all from this book, uh, which is really a book for economists. Okay. So, and I can give you other example, for example, example where, where in the lab um, the people are forcing the population to hospitals. For example, with insects, they, uh, the way they feed the larva and, and the adults allow them to uh, have some extreme condition here. And again, the logistic equation here is used to explain the oscillatory growth of the population. Here is another example uh, called the pupil eye reflex. This is one of the nicest examples where you can make non-invasive uh, experiments um, on the way you reflex or the way that your brain reflects to a pulse of light. So we're talking here about the, the pupil area that you can see either contract or dilate. Okay? And, uh, of course, if you um, send a slight pulse of light, the pupil eye will retract, okay? But this will happen after a delay, okay? Which is about uh, 0.3 seconds, okay? Um, you can make very interesting experiment where you use uh, slit lamp beam, and you just hit, you know, the corner of uh, the area, the pupil eye area, because you don't want it to uh, uh, disturb the patient or the volunteer, you know, uh, could be distracted by this cause of light. And if you do so, you can actually induce oscillatory behavior. Okay? This is not more important, it's just a, a, a constant cause of light the discrete, and you can increase, you can just induce some oscillatory behavior, okay? So, uh, you can induce a sustained oscillatory behavior which has a period, like 29 seconds, which is extremely useful for clinical tests, okay? Testing your uh, brain reflex. This is a very non-invasive uh, uh, method. Uh, if you go to um, the, on the web, there are even some videos where people do the experiment and show it. Okay, another area we call about physiological diseases is something well documented called sustained periodic breathing, or PB in short. 
it happens with patients with cardiac problem or problem if you sleep in altitudes. If you go hiking in mountains, or in high altitude mountains, uh, it doesn't happen to everyone, of course, but you can have those typical patterns when you are sleeping, you tend. You have some breathing and then stop. Breathing, stop. Because actually, it's more spectacular because the guy next door will hear you snoring and then stop. Snoring and stop. <laughs> okay. I'm not kidding. I've seen some documentary where people were, were trying to climb to uh, mountains in the Himalaya. And uh, it happened to one of those guys. And they had a doctor with them and forced them to go back. Okay. So um, this is typically something that happens to some people which are sensible snoring or some uh, periodic breathing, which is a packet of uh, breathing and stop breathing. Okay. So we see you may have some problem of sleep now. The way the, the way the people model it, because, you know, if you look at the literature, is a very simple way. You have an equation for the production or the growth of the pressure. <coughs> you have a term which is constant, production, production of CO2, and then a way to remove the CO2 here by ventilation, by breathing. However, it takes some time to the control process because suppose your CO2, CO2 is high in lung, like for example you are in the mountains and there are not many oxygen, the CO2 is high in lungs, the blood carries the information to the brain and then the brain says yes, okay, it commands the ventilation of your lungs after dilating. Okay? This delay is for three point five minutes. Okay? And that could be important for well, the for the, the control of uh, the pressure, and this is why you have the kind of pressure. Uh, actually, uh, by the way, snoring also is a problem that can be, can, can be modeled by the actual equation problem. Mm -hmm. But then the model will be based on the UV equations. And again, the delay comes from the fact that when you're sleeping, you, you Brain control will be sloppy, you know, and, and, and then of course uh, you can have some problems. Blood disorder is another area where many, many researchers are working. Um, you can have some leukemia, for example, that uh, show uh, some uh, osteotry behavior of the white cells or the blood cells. And again, the model are really in the same way as this model here, a source term, a term that control, but which it has here. Now we come to a different world. You know? Imagine for a moment that you're an engineer, okay, and you are uh, working for a car company here and you have to uh, control what is the air fuel ratio. This is an important environmental constraint. Uh, you need, if you want to sell your car, to have this ratio here, which means 15 parts of air for one part of fuel. Okay? So this is the control. How, how, how can you uh, actually uh, do this? Well, you have some sensor before the catalyst and one after the catalyst. The sensor measures the information about the air content and then give some information to the fuel injector that will then control the, uh, the fuel and hopefully the ratio of air fuel. This is an experiment here where you have a step function here of um, the fuel, and you can see that the response take time, like 0.3 seconds. Okay, so the sensor here, before they react on this step function here, of injection, 
this is the fuel injection, but the blue line. They respond, but they respond by 0.3 seconds. Okay? So here's an example where the delay is important here. And uh, of course, the engineer has to find a way to work, either simplify the system here or have another control system here to reduce this deficiency. Another area where uh, delay and uh, engineering <coughs> interact is what is called uh, shattered instabilities. Okay? This is known from more than 100 years ago. Uh, when you are dealing with high speed machining, and particularly it happens in aeronautics, in a tool fabrication here, you have cut pieces of metals but very quickly. Well, in some condition, you have some kind of resonance up here, and you have those uh, stripes on uh, the metal piece. Of course, this is not what you like. This is by cutting here, here is by drilling, you have this, this triation here, which is a uh, manifestation of vibration called chatter. Okay. Now, you ask me, how is delay appearing in the product? Okay, here is the workpiece, the metal workpiece. Here is a cutter. Okay. You model that by a simple equation here. This is the tool equation here. This is the, like a harmonic oscillators, which represents you know the cutter here that come in and out. It has a frequency, it has a damping, and e has a force that is acting on the metal piece, but that force depends on the present state, or present position, and the position at t minus tau, where tau is a time for one round trip. For example, if you are here, um, if you want to understand what has been affected, you need to take the difference between the actual distance, but also the distance at t minus tau before. Then you can, then you can actually uh, uh, describe the effect of the force. Obviously, if this distance here is a constant, if the surface is not wavy, it's nothing important. This would be like a constant here. Okay, you would have a nice constant cutting. But if the surface become start to become wavy, then this distance here is no more a constant. It can be anything, okay. and that's why. We need to take this into account, and uh, I, will, I will recall that tau is the round trip time for what is metal piece. And just to give numbers, the um, typical period of the cutter is like 10 minus 2 seconds. And the typical uh, uh, period of one round trip is also in the 10 minus 2 seconds. Okay. Uh, as a physicist, you may say, okay, okay, we have some resonance problem. Uh, of course, it's not the classical resonance problem where you have a nice cosine omega t term here, but you have some different time scale here, different frequency here that will be. Okay. So, for the mechanical engineer, this is the worst scenario, and most of his time is spent on finding a way how to add the term here or do something else just to increase the stability of this device. Okay. And all kinds of ideas are explored uh, for that. But in the chemical, uh, in the mechanical engineering uh, business, people are only looking to linear scale. Okay. They only look to the stability of the basic state, say y equal to zero, and see where the domain of stability this, that's the domain that they recommended, and then if they want to increase it, they put some extra term here or extra control term, and see what happens. It's only in the ice theory, while in optics, for example, when it is non-linear behavior. Okay, here is an example that I put uh, because I was last year talking about uh, I was talking the states, United States, and then uh, of course, you have remember this earthquake in the Gulf of Mexico, okay, 
was a tragedy, in, for, at least for the most American. Um, this is an area of research that uh, is comparable to uh, the Shackleton study. If you are drilling, there is a kind of stick slip disabilities. So stop and then go, stop and then go, okay? in addition to this nautical movement, that is creating a lot of problems, violent vibrations at the tip here. Now, there's no way you can see underground what happens. Okay? You put a fiber and fiber in a few minutes. Uh, you can do experiment on a small scale, but they are very limited. Because you have to put on a scale huge forces, you know. And I only know one laboratory that does that, which is in Australia. So people are going there to do the experiments. Okay? So we have to rely on models. And it's only recently that people start to worry about how you model that type of uh, uh, interventions. Okay? Now, this is. 5, 10 kilometers long, you know, it can be longer today. You don't know if it's not going like that. Yeah. So it is really a black box. Okay. And I don't see why now, especially except maybe the small scale experiments, uh, how we can handle this problem without any modeling. And as the shatter problem, shatter scale problem, the fact that they're rotating and hitting the rocks and making a different pattern each time you turn, it will use a delay. You need to know what happens to the rock to, to get the actual force. Okay. You know that uh, Ingo would like to put always uh, pictures of famous people in his restaurants. <laughs> So you can see that uh, Ingo is a uh, human person that uh, is sometimes drinking beer. <laughs> anyway, what I'm talking about is basically based on uh, his long time work in Darmstadt and later on here with uh, his passion on uh, semiconductor laser subject to optical feedback. Uh, like I said before, it's not the value of the time that is important, it is the relative value. The photo lapse time in the laser cavity is in the picosecond. The round trip time is the nanosecond. The ratio is 1000, it is huge. Okay? So even if the feedback of the mirror here is very weak, the delay here uh, is so large that the laser has a time to forget what he has emitted you know, over a tall time before. Okay. And that generates some kind of interesting instabilities, very particular to our optical system. He called so called low frequency fluctuation phenomena, uh, which we study a lot here. Uh, Claudio did a lot of numerical work on that too. <laughs> and uh, so we know how to reproduce it numerically, we know how to exploit it numerically. Uh, this is a picture on the street camera, but uh, I think now we can do better, right? From what, from what I've seen in that. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay? So, message is that the, a large delay, for example, if you have a mirror at one or two meter distance, this will be a large delay. You get some oscillation, you get some behavior that's chaotic, and then increase the noise, and this is not visible in optical. Now, I don't want to leave you with the idea that uh, optical feedback is uh, bad. You know? There are people who are using that for very precise uh, uh, application. Uh, for example, optoelectronic oscillators, which is some kind of closed loop with the feedback and uh, uh, optical part and, and electronic part, which can be described by an equation that uh, really look like the Ikeda equation here, except that we have this extra term, this third term. Okay. So this describes the behavior. We have an R delay with an optical pass, then we have some filtering here, and then you go back to the Alexander, and this is a closed loop. Typically, people use this for where 
getting highly stable microarray of the senior. No doubt that the army is interested in that. But they can also, uh, for different regime of parameter, create very noisy signal, for example, for cryptographic purposes. Okay? I just wanted to emphasize the fact that uh, the, the, the wide behavior or the large the richness of the behavior you can get with this particular device is the fact that you have a large control of the time scale in the problem. For example, you can have power to be 10 picoseconds, the delay to be uh, 50 nanoseconds, and the theta to be the figure of time, 5 microseconds. Okay. And this can change. And no, no surprise, there are different groups which are using this device for very different purposes. Uh, Laurent Marger is interested in engineering applications. Um, Dan Gauthier is interested in new form of chaotic outputs. And uh, well, Raj Roy is interested, for example, in synchronization properties, for example, between neurons, and used, for example, two of those oscillators as a paradigm. Okay. And this is, well, well, do you know that this is why we are so interested and working so hard on laser, particularly here, because we believe that uh, working on laser, learning about what kind of undercurrent phenomena can happen in the lab would be useful for other systems as well. For example, neurons. Okay. It is not easy to do experiments with okay. that. Another friendly application of feedback, this is by using solid state lasers. Now the time scale are much more of a human, 10 minus 10, 10 minus 5. Okay. Still, you have a ratio of 100. Okay. And so the delay is smaller, you don't have necessarily instabilities, but you have still a laser which is highly sensible to optical feedback. And therefore, you can use um, um, optical feedback for imaging, for example, objects in diffusive, diffusive media. For example, here, this was a frame that was in a kind of milk. You, know, you may ask why people would make an image of a coin in a glass of mailbox. If you can do that, okay, then you can do, uh, you can take picture, for example, uh, in other diffusive media, like fog, for example, or blood, or human tissue. Uh, I remind you that if you want to use a microscope to human tissue, you have to color the tissue first. Okay. Here you don't have okay. Also, I didn't have the chance to show you, but um, in this particular case, they measure the relaxation oscillation frequency by just the spectra as a function of the distance, the mirror distance from the laser. They use the Nyan Kobayashi equations, and the solution they obtain match very well with the experiment. So, for me, this particular class of experiments uh, showed that you can believe in. Qualitative comparison between using those so called lack of ash equation that so many people will deny. <laughs> okay, last point is that I wanted to fill out the fact that uh, the delay is not always bad, it can be uh, positive. Engineers a long time ago have found that uh, if you put some specific delay control, you can increase the damage over last year. You just expand, you see this minus tau y prime term, you add this to uh, the left hand side, and you have extra depth. Okay? And this can be used, for example, to, uh, um, for example, stabilize the pendulation of, pendulation of uh, the container, you know, uh, the container crane system. Take a, you take the container, you have to do it fast, you have to, uh, uh, for a current reason, you have to do it very quickly, but you have some oscillations that you want to reduce. People propose to use uh, uh, a delay control like that. This is nothing other than the equation of the pendulum. Okay. This is the delay control that is installed in the system, and use this to uh, increase the damage. 
And just to, to tell you that uh, it is not just uh, uh, theoretical, you know, academic experiment. People, people are actually doing this experimentally and uh, look to the oscillation of uh, this block here that model the container crane and uh, the, then put on the, the control with the delay and you can see the oscillation stopping. Okay. They even ask the dean of the university or president of the university to come in to do whatever he wants to destabilize the system, but nevertheless, every time we try to do oscillation. Skip this. And now I'm talking a little about the uh, research topic, which is just my saga of square waves. Okay. If you explore scalar delay differential equation, this is in all textbooks to have a delay differential equation here, f is non linear function. For example, f could be the Kela equation. Now you're looking into the case when tau d is very large, you change the time scale. If you change the time scale, you get an epsilon here, which is inversely proportional to the delay. Oh, I say, oh, it would be nice to have epsilon equal to zero. Then you get an equation for a map. Okay? And the fixed point of the map actually tell you about the value of the plateaus of the square wave. So this is a typical numerical solution of, for example, this equation here with a large delay, but then if you go into this map, you can find the value of the plateaus. Okay? And there are uh, the best mathematicians in the world which have studied for many, many years the relation between the map and the delay differential equations. Okay? Uh, how good is this map when epsilon goes to zero? So it is a classical problem with delay differential equations. If you delay that, you get square wave. Just to uh, show that uh, this is not just, again, a cubic experiment, a mathematician. Some experiments have been done with the Ikeda equation, not recently, 2001. And you can see that the bifurcation point here is whole bifurcation point. Here is also of chaos map very well or compare very well with the prediction of the map. The map is here with f given by this function. So uh, it's much more easier to work with the map than with the delay equation. And you can see it does a pretty good job. Now in time of Ikeda this was not possible. Because the variant Ikeda I was imagining was a rough approximation. The model you was a rough approximation. It's only in 2001 that people were able to show that, yes, that it compared very well. So uh, not only the mathematician can guarantee this is true, also we can do it in the lab. OK. Do you know this person? <laughs> now here comes the drama. Uh, working with David uh, on two copper laser with Perlin we need feedback. Uh, I don't want to explain that because the problem which has two pure mode solutions which are competing and therefore they can produce spray away behavior one each other time. Okay? So we're interested in those square wave behavior where say one mode after a period of time will take over the other mode. We're never able to uh, really simulate that numerically. Numerically, we wait forever, and the solution, the path, the square wave becomes the same. Okay? But they were saying, oh, I see that for microseconds in the lab. <laughs> it is real. <laughs> okay? So we were still debating about that. The problem is that this problem has seven or the yet that equation coupled together, so we delay. Pretty difficult to analyze that mathematically. Okay. And numerically, you can only simulate for longer, longer period, but okay. where is the some physics missing? <laughs> and here is one of the key of the problem. Uh, this is called metastability. Suppose you have a problem like that. This problem differs from, uh, for example, the key example, the fact that you have a bistable 
behavior because of the x minus x cube term. Right? So you have three steady state zero and uh, plus or minus one or plus or minus one plus c. And here you have a feedback term. Suppose you will simulate those equations here giving this kind of uh, patterns for one period. So one value here, one value here for one third, and, and another value for one third of the delay time. For short time, you say, oh, it looks like that I have a, a, a structure which really follow what uh, I want. I have different length for the plateaus, okay? And therefore, I have found a square wave which has different length for the plateaus. But if you integrate for a very, very long period of time, it disappears completely. This solution is not there. Okay? And actually, mathematically, you can demonstrate that uh, there is no stable solution besides the monotone one. Okay? This is an example of metastability. You seem to have a stable structure here, and in an interesting one, but it disappears after a long time. You can actually show you would show that the stability depends on uh, the change of the layers, and that that change depends on an exponential of minus one over epsilon. The epsilon here is the inverse of the delay, so it is pretty small. Okay, and that's why you have to wait for a very long period of time before those transition layers decide to move and then. But so this is an example of uh, metastability on the baby problem here, okay? And so the ultimate question we had with David was, are we having a bifurcation phenomena that does those square waves for different plateaus? And maybe there's some physics missing in the model. Or are we dealing with some genius tra transient behavior called metastable? because the delay is large, and it was large in the experiment of it. So we're over debating about that, and uh, that has actually poisoned us a lot, and we never wanted to cover the result, we were never sure, because there was some physics answer like, uh, oh, it's noise, always, oh, always sustained uh, structure, so uh, uh, noise loses the job, but, you know, I'm not convinced about that. <laughs> So, I was really perturbed by the fact that we cannot have an example of a bifurcation phenomena which produce square waves with different plateau lengths. Okay. What would be the minimum requirement for that? We know Ikira cannot do that, that would be the full square wave with equal plateaus. There's a lot of literature for scalar equations. So for scalar equation here, we cannot get it. So Laurent did an experiment, and actually you, Ingo, and they remember, this was an experiment done in the North Sound, within that, okay? And for very special value of condition of the experiment, on a single optoelectronic oscillator, he was able to generate the okay? You can see the length of the plateau here are uh, different. Okay. So this is somewhat equivalent to David's discovery that you can have some square wave different plateau lengths, but here the problem is much more simple. We have here this optoreconic oxygen, which is not going to be modeled by seven equations. Okay. It's actually going to be modeled by two equations. Another point that I wanted to uh, emphasize, it is not a two time delay. It's a one more delay. So don't tell me that it's déjà vu. No, it's a different, completely different delay. Okay, here's a bit of the math. Okay, here you, you are in different equation here. You do some uh, change of variable, and then finally you have the working equation here with small parameter epsilon 1 and delta, and I skip all the details. You take advantage of those two small parameters, okay? 
uh, if delta equal to zero here, you have a single equation for x one. Okay. Uh, but the coupling with the white equation here is very important because if we didn't have that term here, we just back to ETA language, back to a scalar Lilly-Fletcher really equation for where the Lavoisian tells did nothing else than square away the same flat two x. Okay. So this extra guy here is important. This extra guy comes from the ET okay. This is just a two variable formulation of the ET Lilly-Fletcher really equation. There's no city. And here is the answer. This is the numerical solution of uh, the equation that I showed you before. I have S naught here and one minus S naught here. S naught is the length of the smaller plateau. This is by doing some asymptotics. Basically, I construct a solution, but with the assumption that you have different plateaus. Here, the transition layer here does not play a role, fortunately. Okay? So basically, you're doing some asymptotics with maps. Okay? A little bit more complicated because you have <coughs> different lines, different conditions, different connections. But you can do that, and this is the bifurcation layer. Okay? That gives you the extrema. You can see it worked very well with the local solution. This is an approximation. Also, the length of the plateau here has not been displayed here, and you can see it dramatically dropped to zero at some critical value. Right now, I don't know the nature of this bifurcation. I can tell you it is not a full bifurcation, because that we have checked, that's easy, you just look through the reactor. We suspect it is a bifurcation that is isolated, so we have like a Southern node of limit cycles. Okay. But this has to be demonstrated. Mathematically, I cannot go beyond this point here because the asymptotic will fail. Because it has not become as small and comparable to the transition layer, clearly I have to do something different. Okay. So this is good only if we are not too close to this point. But maybe you can do some different asymptotics. We didn't try that. But the point is that I would say that this is a minimal condition for having those square waves with different plateau length. You just need an extra linear free, okay? like the extra beer. OK, here is the summary. I hope I convinced you that the equation here, the equation appears in all areas of science of engineering. I didn't have the time really to comment on that, but uh, People are acting with those delay equation models uh, in different ways, depending on their experience. I said the engineers, for example, don't want to hear about the nonlinear phenomena. They really are obsessed by the linear theory, the stability chart. Okay? Uh, while in optics, we have a completely different be, um, opinion. We would like to use those nonlinear behavior. A good sense. Uh, in biology, the problem is that, or in physiology, the problem is that we don't have good models. So don't come with a very complex model. Just come to a model with just a source term and a decay term. And then you can start to discuss with the people and see maybe they can get the guidance on their data. Okay. Now, so this is more personal. I think that we are doing too much numerics on delay equations. And I think we need some analytical tools because there are phenomena that we cannot expect easily based on our experience on PDEs or this. For example, metastability. It's not something that you know, we have to think hard to find some example <coughs> in different air. Okay, we cast the air. Also, the fact that we can have branching of periodic solution and not coming from a compound. I think it's quite often the case with delay equations, more often than with all these. That's something that we should also have to be uh, 
aware because continuation method cannot be used now. Mm -hmm. We have to need some IPP guidance before we explore the primary space. And then something also, also that I need, I would like to emphasize that you know, for all those phenomena, we need point one. We need basic model for uh, understanding the phenomena completely. <coughs> like a simple example I was giving you, that I formed because uh, otherwise we just keep asking questions like this big problem that I have today, seven couple of equations. Nothing we can do it okay? okay? We work harder and harder, we try way hard, and uh, therefore we have to go backwards and say, okay, what are we going to look for? We're looking for a square wave problem with different factor length, and that can be originate from a simple bipolar. Not by noise, not by something else that could be back to the state. Okay? And this is the case. So now we know. Now we know that if this is the case in the experiment, we have to look for bifurcation. Thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot, Thomas, for the broad overview of what where delays can be found and what they can do. Uh, we have time for a few questions. In the asymmetric model you showed you, you are only able to get two values for one one value for the let's say. In the one, only one value, which is asymmetric, but it's a single value. While in the experiment, you see different values. Only oh, yeah, yeah, the only value you make choose the power maker. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you cannot. Yeah. Because if your transition goes from zero to a, a constant value. Yeah, so but the plateau length is different. Yeah, the plateaus are different, but only you have different. I mean, it can be either, let's say, 0.4 and 0.6, but you cannot change. No, no, but the, 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 the sum of the two is the delay. Yes. Okay. But in that curve, you see that it goes from zero as a function of beta. It goes yeah, from yeah. zero to 0.4, oh, yeah. and you cannot change that value of 0.4 with that model. Yeah. How can you make something like a linear that you can have different yeah. values for different beta? By the next year, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, I'm so happy because this experiment was done in Brazil, so and we were all there. You know? uh, I was giving a talk about the same phenomena for these two couples of Turkey and Basque. Based on student work. Now, here I had a single optical mass here. I had a person who was normally who believed, like me, that this is possible without noise. Okay. So, when I went back from Besançon, I worked like a devil, you know, on this problem to show this entity. And uh, without that particular experiment, maybe we would not have done it so far. Other questions? <coughs> Can you tell us something about the capacity differential equation with delay? There's a lot of work on stochastic differential equation with delay. This is a very important, but this is a video work uh, in itself. People are not always in small uh, noise. They want to have also the effect of strong noise. You can have some bistable behavior. Uh, there are other phenomena uh, caused by the, by, the, by the delay and the, the noise. Um, for example, if you were looking to the balancing stick experiment, uh, you can see that we know all that, know that that if the stick is too short, it's not going to work because our brain is not sufficiently fast. Physiologists believe that uh, noise there will play an important role because uh, it will import some frequencies, more frequencies, and to be able to study that. We will help the brain. So there's a lot of work done on uh, stochastic delay differential equations, but uh, this is purely numerical. So you mentioned that uh, that is often the case in these delay differential equations that we have oscillations and that they and that we have bifurcations of those limit size and yeah. so on, but they do not come from they often don't come from pop bifurcation. They do come from other application. Okay. Okay. No, no. Yeah. Most of them come from other application. I was emphasizing the fact that you can add in extra some branching of periodic solution from uh, you know, some load of limit mm size. -hmm. And not only one, it can be many, many other mm -hmm. with different amplitudes. But yes, the whole application is the main mechanism. I have a question concerning the chatter and the stick slip. Because you said they are related. Yeah. 
And for the checker instability, some control methods have been um, developed. Uh, have they already been applied to stick slip um, system? Two years ago, there was the first conference on, on this kind of problem. It happened in Belgium. I came there. It had people from different backgrounds, people working for other companies, people doing experiments in lab, and also modeling. Uh, the third problem was to agree. And uh, that was not so easy. <laughs> so, <laughs> before we can uh, come to, uh, you know, solution, uh, we'll take another time or another few conferences. Now, you know, when those disabilities appear, the cube, you know, outside, the Derrick, everything vibrates. Okay? The thing you have to do is just run away. <laughs> <laughs> Each time you drill, it's one million dollar. Okay. If, it, if it's lost connection, lost. So it's an important motivation to some money. <laughs> but people have to agree about uh, what are the minimum things that you have to do. Yeah. Uh, not the case. Uh, first of all, thank you to my again. <laughs> somebody is interested to talk in more detail with Thomas, he will still be here tomorrow on here. Seven o'clock, okay? I am here. I am up here. <laughs> Thank you.